be able to slot in the 9850X3D into your PC soon. But maybe don't trust Asus for it. But uh, hey, we can maybe trust that Intel's coming out with the B770. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host, and this is Dude. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, December 8th, 2025. As you can tell, Reese and I are a little differently shaded than Friday's episode. We thankfully got to spend some time with the great chaps over at Wootware uh, for their end of year function. They invited us down. Reese and I got to go hang out with those people and- A lot of fun, good times. I love being back in South Africa. I love Wootware. I love that entire company, just good times. So. Uh, we're, we declined a lot of sunscreen requests and there were no clouds in the sky in Cape Town. Bad idea on our part, but in case you're looking at getting a new CPU, 9850X3D might be a good idea on your part. And now benchmarks are showing that it exists. We have some numbers and we'll talk about them, but again, with synthetic benchmarks, don't take these yeah. too seriously. Clock speed, 5.6 gigahertz. We knew that that was gonna happen. The benchmark score indicates that it's gonna be roughly 5% faster than the 9800X3D. So you're not supposed to upgrade from the 9800 X3D. This is not for you people who already have that. <laughs> this is for the people who don't have an X3D chip yet, all right, and can afford RAM, all right? It's not for you. It's for, for the other people, but it does look like CES announcement and subsequent launch is getting more and more likely. Last week, we talked about how it was popping up in Shipping Manifest. AMD put it on their website accidentally, and now scores. But in case you want to remember when CES is happening, you should definitely use today's video sponsor. We're some busy little bees around here. Multiple videos going live every day, managing multiple Twitch streams and tinkering with goofy stuff for future writing. It's super easy to feel overwhelmed and get a little lost in the sauce sometimes. Lucky for us and for you, if you're also a busy bee, today's sponsor Acaflow is here to help organize and streamline even the wildest of workflows. A big win for Acaflow is the focus on time blocking. By dragging and dropping your tasks, and setting how long they'll take you, you can visualize your day ahead. This is great for fighting off dreaded procrastination and gives a nice boost to your focus and productivity. You can even customize your event blocks color and other preferences so you can get info at just a glance. Acaflow even makes it easy for all your tasks to be in one place. Unlike those slow pokes that have to copy everything over from Gmail, Slack, Notion, whatever, you can simply connect your productivity tools and have them centrally located in your universal inbox. Your 2 p.m. meeting from Gmail, right there your boss asking for that project in Slack, you won't miss it in Acaflow. If you want a little extra help too, Acaflow has an AI co-pilot that learns from your habits and can make intelligent suggestions to help improve your workflow. The co-pilot can auto-assign tasks based on your personal preferences, so if you're getting flooded with all kinds of different work-related requests, they can be nicely sorted and ready for you to block out. If you're the type of person that benefits from a productive morning ritual, then Acaflow is the perfect way to step into an organized and customizable flow. You even get a one-on-one one onboarding session when you start, so you can have a hands-on tour of the program and ask any questions you may have. Check Acaflow out for yourself via my custom link in the description below. Huge thanks to Acaflow for sponsoring. And like clockwork, you can put it on your calendar that somebody's gonna leave Apple because there are major departures happening at the iPhone company with them having, I think, roughly half a dozen executives mm -hmm. leave in the last few weeks. That includes people who are senior vice presidents and other vice presidents and major players, vice president of human interface design, which is how you interact with the machines and the senior vice president for machine learning and AI strategy, you probably got rid of I was about to say. Yeah, that, uh, one, that one a little justified. I see it, I see it. But, Reese get ready to be devastated because reports are coming in that the next departure is likely to be Johnny mm. Shrouji, who spearheaded the entire Apple Silicon campaign. I know, I know. So the guy who's responsible for the fact that Mac is, is awesome now, is awesome now, both power efficiency on battery life, also just straight up performance for like an integrated little. This guy is looking to depart for not entirely clear reasons, but just not necessarily feeling like Apple's going to be his future and that Apple does not want this to happen. So they're offering substantial pay packages, more responsibilities, which is a good thing at this level of where you are. I fully agree. Or even uh, becoming CTO, which would put him very, very high in the company. Uh -huh. And given how impactful Apple Silicon has been, I don't necessarily disagree. I want him to have a good negotiation with Apple because he needs to stay, please. Actually, so think of it from the other direction, right? I'm sure that there's plenty of other super capable engineers at, at Apple who can handle, you know, iterative chip development. Mm -hmm. This could potentially mean that like, if he goes to work for somebody else, 
we get more competition and that there's a better like ARM processor out there. Maybe he goes to Snapdragon and makes those less garbage. That would be potentially nice. Wouldn't be the worst. Exactly. So there, there are valuable reasons to, to move on. But even though this is valuable in a monetary sense, I don't find it personally valuable. Netflix announcing that they are acquiring Warner Brothers. $82 billion is the total package. This has to happen after Warner Brothers dumps off Discovery, but makes it so that Netflix can have Stranger Things and Game of Thrones, and then they can all be in Fortnite together. Yay. This obviously has a lot to go on. Netflix saying that nothing should initially change. HBO Max should stay, Netflix should stay, but eventually things will merge together. They're still gonna do theatrical releases for a whole bunch of stuff, which Netflix has already been getting into with things like the Knives Out series. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of questions around here. So it has to go through Warner Brothers shareholder approval regulatory approvals is going to be yeah, a massive gonna be one. A tough one I think. Yeah, it's very unclear if this is actually going to go through. Plenty of people on both sides of the political aisles in the United States are vocalizing some dissent with this. Certain reasons on different sides for why it's going to happen, but I think Regardless, the customer is going to suffer for this because Netflix is just going to raise their prices by whatever. We HBO know it's Max. coming. Yeah, yeah, there's no way that this ends up being just a net gain for the customer. We're going to have to pay for it and not necessarily a fan of the idea. And some people aren't a fan of the idea of putting ads into your chat bot. And OpenAI says, they're not ads. We promise. It's not an ad for us to advertise stuff. It can't be. All right. Okay. So. I'll hear them out. So because of lack of revenue, uh, these mm -hmm. chatbot companies have to make money somewhere. And the idea that they would be putting ads into these feeds has been a report for quite some time. And there's been screenshots of it happening. OpenAI's executive saying that anything you're seeing is either not real or it's not an ad, okay? It's rather an app integration, which is something totally different. It's different. Especially when you look at somebody like Benjamin and his little chat GPT 5.1 setup where he actively pays for a subscription to ChatGPT, asked ChatGPT about a BitLocker issue that he was having that he needed to figure out, and he should shop for home and groceries at Target. So this is just purely an app integration, okay? This is not an affiliate linking, right? There's probably no back-end kick from Target. There pro there, no, there's probably no, no agreement there whatsoever. Even if it was relevant, this is not an ad for you to go shop at Target. No, but you should go shop at Target. Especially if you have a computer, go shop for groceries at Target. Yeah. Allegedly, they're gonna be working on this to make it more relevant, but it's not an ad, all right? That's, it's not an advertisement. They did not advertise because maybe they didn't get paid directly to put it into the feed, but it's, it's not an ad. It's not an ad. In a way, uh, UFD Deals isn't an ad, but we do get affiliate commission. I'll yeah. be upfront about that. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. And hey, here's your first deal. First up, we have Pokemon Legends Zeta A on the Nintendo Switch going for $44.99, making it $15 off. It's rare to see a first party Nintendo title go on sale, especially this soon. And I've been enjoying my playthrough of it, so here you go. But then next up, we have the Western Digital Blue SN5000. This Gen 4 NVMe M.2 SSD is going for $64.99 for the two terabyte variant, making it $90 off. And then lastly today, again, Gift option for that person who you really don't know what to get the Sony PlayStation Store $100 gift card is going for only $90 with include promo code making it $10 off and hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I'm gonna hand you off back to us I guess for the rest of your hot news cheers well Reese, let's talk about some bad deals when it comes to customer service in a whole bunch of different mm -hmm. regions we're gonna start off with Asus and the RTX 5090 Astral which again is one of the most expensive graphics cards on the market right now this is happening after a customer sent in their GPU from RMA because they were having black screens and they were having restarts and this is a known kind of problem with 50 series GPUs, it can happen. And Asus declining it because of a surface irregularity. But while that sounds like, oh man, maybe the customer did something, there are multiple pieces of evidence that the customer did not do it. So the Redditor posting that they both took photo evidence of their card before sending it in, there was no surface irregularity on the card in those pictures. Number two, Asus recorded a video unboxing of the card when they received it. Good customer service practice, get it? Surface irregularity is not present in that video either. Oh. What it is present in is this microscopic analysis of the card. You can see that little line right there, and they're claiming that it is customer damage. So after the customer hoo-hawed and hee heed about this is nonsense, Asus tried to strike a deal of 50% off. You can replace the card for half. 
Yikes. Absolute garbage. Nonsense. Asus do better. Yeah. I, I don't have anything to add to that. Wow. Well, I have something to add to that, and that is NVIDIA do better because reports are coming in of the RTX 5080's little power connector having a little bit of a connection issue where the little retention clip that's on it broke off for a customer, Oops. as you can see right there, and NVIDIA coming out and just saying that that is straight up customer-induced damage, so we're not going to replace it. This is despite the fact that there are plenty of well-known issues with this 12-volt power connector. Number two, as somebody who has personally had this happen, into their Founders Edition card, this appears to be more than just this guy who's having this issue. Now, initially, I didn't submit this for RMA at all because I thought that this was a power user issue. I was moving the card around a lot and yeah. plugging it on, plugging it, and I don't know how many times I did it. And then when the, the clip broke, I was like, I was probably not careful. But seeing that it's happening to other people, but it's a plastic clip, they break all the time. It's delicate nylon. And for NVIDIA to say that this was the end user's problem, NVIDIA do better, replace their card. Yeah. If you're a $5 trillion company, replace the 5080. That's yeah. a pretty simple <laughs> conclusion that we want to happen there. And Dell and Lenovo are coming to the conclusion that they need to jack up prices. RAM, NAND, all of that kind of stuff. It's just prices are elevating. Dell and Lenovo coming out and saying that they're going to have to raise prices 15 to 20% right now, mid-December. That's what Dell's doing. Lenovo's going to happen sometime in 2026. They're saying that the price increases on RAM and NAND are just unlike anything they've ever seen. Looking at and use a pricing. I don't disagree with them. And so in order for them to continue to be profitable, they will have to uh, start not eating the cost, but instead passing them on to you. But in those little devices, Intel chips are there. And Intel wants you to think that they're doing well because they said that the reason they're not selling more of their Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake chips is because there's not enough capacity to go around. They can't uh, make enough. Of course, yeah. If yeah. they could make more, they could sell more. That's what they said. You, you figure out what to do with that information. But what I'm figuring out what to do with this information is get excited because Battle Mage, the BMG G31 GPU, also known as the Arc B770, is popping up in official software support from Let's Intel. Go. So we've already seen shipping manifests pop up. We've seen plenty of other driver support happen for it. And now official software support on some of Intel's stuff with them saying that support for Intel Arc Battle Mage BMG G31 and Intel Core Ultra 3 processors Panther Lake, so that you don't think they're the same thing, are in this latest update, which gives us a pretty good understanding that this is likely to be a CES announcement. Mm -hmm. Panther Lake has already been confirmed by Intel to be a CES announcement. The B770 potentially gonna follow along with that. It lines up with the timeline. Yeah. So in case you wanted an Intel GPU that's better than the B580, a couple weeks before uh, we're gonna hear about it more, who knows when they're actually gonna release it. But B770, those hopes are still not dead. Keep them alive. I will continue to hope. And I'm gonna continue to hope you guys write better comments. Let's see what you had to say on Friday's episode of Hot News. We got GDRS saying, glad to see the return of physics. And Mr. Visionary saying, NVIDIA has to pay developers. Oh, poor NVIDIA, richest company in the world. And Lost Cosmos saying, for an $800 to $1,000 GPU, I wanna be able to play all my games. That includes old titles, not just the latest ones. I just, number one, Physics was still there. Physics was still there, okay? It was just the 64-bit. Blame the developers for not supporting 64-bit physics. <laughs> and they support 32. So they, you know, there's that. But then also, it's not that they had to pay developers. It's that they had to pay developers for a deprecated s software that very few people ever used that uh, didn't impact the ability to play the games. It just impacted your ability to use a feature. The feature isn't necessary to play those games. You turn it off and then you could still play the games. To believe that you have to support all features forever because it's a computer is not how anything works. Like, Valve doesn't support 32-bit Steam anymore. 32-bit operating systems are gone. We don't do this. Yeah. Like, it is a normal thing that happens. Yes, you can still play 32-bit games on PC, but not all 32-bit pieces of software have evergreen support forever. It doesn't make sense to do that. It's just how it goes. I personally don't hold the companies to it to continue to support what I would consider almost legacy software at this point. Not just- Well after the fact. Not just legacy, niche. Niche legacy software. I'm not on the hype train of hating NVIDIA for this. And then we got Dallas saying, I test in prod. I sure do. Okay, so we're talking about the UFD RPG that, that launched. Part of that is that I kind of have to. There's really no way for me to test on a non-stop live stream with like actual integration with yeah. the live stream. I can't take the, the stream down because then I can't do the testing because nobody's there to actually do. It's a whole thing. So there's part of that. There are ways that I can do some testing around that, but 
another patch dropped this morning, version mm -hmm. three. Whole bunch of balancing updates. There's new skill sets, new features. So if you tried it out, I also wiped the save file and we didn't have a backup system. So there's a new backup system for save files. Yeah. So that this Progress. never happens. This doesn't happen again. But yeah, you're gonna have to start over. So uh, the pin message clearly states that I, I wiped it. However, given that this is a game in an alpha state and I'm a bad developer, this will <laughs> likely not be the last data wipe. So, yeah, yeah. but thank you to everybody who's played around with the UFD RPG. We're gonna continue to make some progress on uh, more development, testing it out, making it better for Yins, getting it to see it rolled out and in production has been helpful for fixing a bunch of stuff. So thank you. And then VF saying, fired the other guy, right? They pulled a Linus. We've fired nobody. If you're referring to me moving and you not seeing like Kyler or Michael or anything. They're still there. They're still there. The rule was if I was moving to South Africa, nobody was losing, losing their job because of that. We were gonna, and then everybody else is still here on the South African side. So they're just not always on camera. And then we got I Love Persona 3 Lat saying, have you tried any Persona games before? They're life changing, bro. I think he likes Persona. I'm not sure about that. I have played Persona 5. Life-changing is not the phrase I would use to describe it. A, a, a good RPG, sure. Not a fan of the fact that it's high schoolers. The game would be exactly the same if it was set in college. Yeah. Exactly the same, no different. So the fact that they chose for the protagonist to be in high school was a choice. And then one of the relationship options is a teacher. Mm -hmm. Messed up. but. What's even more messed up is that the first boss is based on another teacher, a male teacher doing that with a female student. More manipulative, definitely a worse scenario, but still in a like, there, there's not okay. to entry of why I haven't tried the Persona games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I have problems with it. Life changing is not the phrase I would use. Maybe four and three aren't as uh, straightforward with the um, all I know statutory five. situations. Yeah. We're not Kid Rock in Osmosis Jones, all right? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google Kid Rock Osmosis Jones song, read the lyrics, be appalled, completely devastated that they put that in a children's movie. Yep. Yep, yep. That and it I've... exists at all, but then also the environment in which they, whatever. All right, I just, <laughs> Persona got me worked up right now. And then I just wanted to highlight Bob Bastian saying, end to end encryption for the Kohler. I like well, it, I that like was, it. I, brilliant. And this episode wasn't very brilliant, especially that Kid Rock bit. Let's, uh, Let's move on from How that. does, how? How do you still have a career after writing those lines? It's rough, it's so rough. See you back here for more of the hottest techniques tomorrow.